Hey everybody, this is John for MTG Nexus coming at you with another deck overview, this time with Death and Taxes in the modern format. As a friendly reminder, if you do like these informative deck overviews, please consider subscribing to the channel, giving us a thumbs up, and leaving a constructive comment down below, like maybe what deck you'd like to see us cover next. And don't forget to check out our Pioneer channel, Pioneer Nexus MTG, where we do the same thing for the Pioneer format. So this is a deck that is near and dear to very few players' hearts. And that is Death and Taxes, more famous for its legacy variant, as that version has access to some very powerful tools, such as Rich on Important Wasteland. This is Modern's kind of sad attempt of Cat Jesus and Friends. Uh, the main thing that sets this deck apart from a lot of other decks in the format is its mana disruption slash denial plan, mostly centered around the card Leonin Arbiter. Lehman Arbiter is a card that basically says players can't search libraries. Any player may play two to, for that player to ignore that effect the, until the end of turn. This basically puts a tax on things like fetch lands, puts a tax on any type of summoner's packs, puts a tax on any type of, you know, uh, primeval titan searching for lands, um, any of those kind of things. And, uh really really messes with things because of the clunkiness of the magic online uh interface and also the fact that if for some reason Liam narber is exiled after you've paid this tax there's another tax because it's a different copy which can be relevant with the card flicker list that we'll get to in a moment basically you are playing a non-fetch land deck in a very fetch land heavy format and you're trying to abuse the synergy that happens to come with that using things like Field of Ruin and Ghost Quarter to try to mana screw your opponent, kind of doing a poor man's imitation of the Rishadon Port Wasteland stuff that the, the Legacy version does. Another key card to the strategy is Aether Vial, as with most creature-based decks, mostly tribal ones, such as Merfolk, Humans, or Spirits. This allows you to kind of cheat on mana in the mid-game um, once you've played it on turn one, ideally, and allowing you to kind of vial in and do some tricky things, especially with cards like Flicker Wisp and Anointed Peacekeeper. Beyond that, you're kind of a white weenie slash mid-range deck using things like Thalia to tax your opponent's uh, things, using things like Archon of Ameria from uh, your non-basic lands from your opponent coming into play, and also uh, furthering your Lean and Arbiter slash Ghost Quarter Field of Ruin strategy, while also kind of limiting how many spells can be played, and also, you kind of get around this with the card Ether Vial and things like Stoneforge Mystic activations. Another key card to this deck is Stoneforge Mystic, which allows you to turn most of your kind of me mediocre mono white beats into solid threats with things like Batter Skulls, Caldera Complete, Sword of Fire and Ice, Lion Sash, etc. This card obviously sees a lot of play in the Hammer Time variant, and this, in much like that deck, this gives this deck a lot of utility, although it doesn't have a KO punch like Hammer, although Caldera Complete does come pretty close. Beyond that, you also run a playset of Giver of Runes, a slightly weaker version of the legacy version Mother of Runes that allows you to protect your creatures at the cost of not being able to protect itself. And then the Charming Prince, as you will see, play in some of these. Just kind of a nice utility thing that allows you to have a nice little blink thing you can blink. Can scry to, can gain some life, and can also exile your other creatures, continuing this annoying blinking loop that we'll talk about in a minute. Anointed Peacekeeper is a newer addition of the deck from Dominary United. Kind of allows you to do a elite spellbinder esque impression. Um, members of the bat under the battlefield look at target opponent's hand and choose any card name. Spells your opponent's cast with a chosen name cost two more to cast. Activate abilities of sources with a chosen name cost two more to activate unless they're mana abilities. This makes their, their key card more expensive, and if you can blink it, makes it even more annoying as you're able to keep activation costs of Planeswalkers and such. Once again, really emphasizing the taxes here. Skyclave Apparition, nice way to deal with problematic permanence. Uh, four or less, that's really most of the modern format, although there are some notable things like Murktide this doesn't hit. And then finally, everybody's favorite free elemental for Modern Horizons too. Solitude, key way to deal with creatures without having to run things like Path to Exile in your deck. Although, some versions do run Path in the sideboard. Ephemerate, way to protect your creatures, get a little bit of extra value. 
And then finally, Flicker Wisp, the most annoying card to play against whenever it can be played at instant speed. Um, remember, it enters the battlefield, exile to her permanent, return that perp. That card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of your next end step, or beginning of the next end step. A lot of shenanigans you can do with this, especially if you have an ether vial, being able to vial this in on during an end step. You can remove an opponent's blocker um, for their entire turn, they don't get back until their end step. Remove a problematic permanent that they can't use to, during their turn. Uh, also, notably, you can even remove a land for them. Um, and also, you can use this to kind of protect a key card of yours from like a wrath effect or a removal spell. Um, it just kind of slices and dices. Obviously a lot better with us when it's on the ether vial. A little bit clunky whenever you have to cast it. So obviously you don't kind of have the protection effect unless you have like an ephemerate or something. But still, 3-1 flyer. Nothing to scoff at. And it is very tricky to play against. Land base. Obviously we already kind of mentioned the fact that you don't run fetch lands because you are a land and arbiter deck. You basically play a pile of planes. You play some canopy lands. You play a couple of each of the ganjos. Some number of Cave of the Frost Dragons, and that's kind of your land base. Sideboard, this version, a couple copies of Path to Exile to substitute to supplement your solitudes as removal spells. Containment Priests, um, non creature token went to the battlefield and it wasn't cast. Exile it instead, great way to hit anything like Dredge, anything like Indomitable Creativity, etc. Lean in Relic Warder. Remember it enters the battlefield, you may exile target artifact or enchantment. Whenever it leaves the battlefield, return the exile to card of the battlefield under its owner's control. A great way to fight against hammer time, etc. A great way to exile Karn tokens, or Urza Saga tokens, etc. Sanctifier and Vec. Great against Mono Red. Great against Burn. Great against Recto Scam. Need I say more? Even Mind Sensor. A is if the Searching Claws isn't already enough with Leon and Arbiter. Let's add yet another card that can do it. And it has Flash, because why not? Temporary Lockdown. Kind of feels a little bit awkward with all the stuff you got going on here for two minutes or less, but can be relevant. Worship. A. Throw this into the mix with a Sanctifier and Vec. All of a sudden, Burn can't kill you. And then, finally, March of Otherworldly Light. Just another good removal spell. Allows you deal with artifacts, creatures, or enchantments, and obviously your deck's entirely mono white. Kind of trivial to, to pitch a card if you absolutely have to to remove something from the battlefield. Then you look in this version, not a whole lot different going on. Um, you know, we're still seeing a lot of the same cards, but you do see a few differences. Um, one here is Extraction Specialist, allowing you to rebuy any of your one or two mana plays. You know, this can allow you to rebuy your. Uh, Giver of Ruins Should Die, Alien and Arbiter, Stoneforge Mystic, Athalia, the Guardian of Thraben. Uh, equipment package is a little bit different in this deck. We've already kind of mentioned Lion Sash. This is a way to attack the graveyard while also having a uh, way to pump your creatures for fairly cheap. Um, beyond that, another card you'll see is Ameria's Call, which is a white card that is a basically bolt yourself planes, but also it can be a spell in the late game if you happen to hit seven lands for some reason and need to cast some angels and give the rest of your creatures indestructible. You know, things and stuff. Uh, this sideboard's a little bit different, obviously. Burnton Forest Tender serves much the same purpose as Sanctifier and Vec, although this can also prevent things like Anger of the Gods from sweeping your board. Um, very tough for a deck like Burn or Is It Murktide to kind of fight through. Draineth Magistrate. Uh, very similar effect to um, Containment Priest, except for your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands, meaning basically things in graveyards can't be cast or things can't be flashed back. Also can't exile spells and cast them, making things like Cascade notably worse. Rest in Peace, Graveyard Shenanigans, um, helps against Murktide, helps against Dredge, helps against Living In. Stony Silence, anything with artifacts, I mean, kind of kind of goes up against you a little bit, but, you know, if you really need to beat an Affinity deck, or there's a Saga deck, or Hammer Time, Sanctifier and Vec, we've already kind of covered. Sell the Wreckage, nice little combat trick to kind of turn a race in your favor. And March of Roller World of Light, we've kind of covered. Um, Death and Taxes is a deck that is very uh, tricky. That's, I guess that's the best way to play it, to describe it. It is a mono-white creature beatdown deck that has some disruptive elements. Um, 
It's not quite as aggressive or disruptive as humans, but it's got a lot more nuance to it than the humans decks do. You know, while the humans decks have things like meddling mage and such, this deck really relies on Cat Jesus and Flicker Wisp to really get some value. Um, and honestly, there's a lot of fancy tricks you can do with this deck, especially revolving around Flicker Wisp or things like um, the uh, Charming Prince. And honestly, it, it's a deck that is a sum more of its uh, more than the sum of its parts. While it may seem on rate, this deck isn't very good. Obviously, it doesn't see a ton of play in the modern format. This is a deck that, in the hands of a skilled death and taxes pilot, can make your life absolutely miserable. I say that as someone who has begrudging respect for Cat Jesus, as it is the card probably in the modern format that I hate the most. And that, that says a lot, given that there's a lot of frustrating things in the modern format to play against. Um, I've played it on a few occasions. It's a interesting deck to get a hold of. Um, and it's certainly something you should be aware of in the modern format. And if you have someone at your local game store that is a Death and Taxes pilot, either in Modern or Legacy, you should really give them props because it takes a lot of cojones to be casting Lean and Arbor in a format with Omnas and Indomitable Creativities and uh, Living Ends and Murktide Regents and Ragavans and all this other stuff. You know, it takes a takes a, takes a special person to be casting mono white hate bears in a format full of very powerful broken stuff, but sometimes it gets there. So as always, this has been John for MTG Nexus. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what deck you might like to see us cover next. <laughs>